what is going on guys and welcome back to the channel so i'm sure many of you have seen my truck in the background of a lot of videos we use this thing to tow the cars to the track to the dyno anywhere that they might need to go and i've been using it as my daily driver for quite a while now we just rounded 90,000 miles with it so i wanted to make today's video to go over a few things that i like about the truck some things i might dislike also any issues that we've had to it or anything i've had to do to it and some customizations that we've done so let's get through the intro and jump right into today's video So now that we've gotten through the intro, I want to give you guys a quick rundown before we fire this thing up, let it warm up and take it for a ride and talk a little bit more about it. So to start off with, this truck is a 2017 GMC Sierra 3500 Denali. It does have the L5P Duramax in it and it is a dual rear wheel truck. So we're going to start off right up here in the front and work our way around. So starting off right here, we've got some spec detuning headlights and then a vivid light bar behind the grill. We've also got the bumper filler panel and some SS3 fog lights from Diode Dynamics. Those things are super bright and I've loved having them. Then as we work our way around here, you guys can see that the truck does sit pretty level. We don't have a leveling kit on it, but I did crank the keys up a little bit. And then when we did that, I added the Fox remote reservoir shocks. We've also got the kryptonite inner and outer tie rod kit and a whirly custom fab transmission brace then working out to the wheels we've got some 22 inch fuel wheels wrapped in 33 12 and a half toyo open countries then as we start working our way around the truck we've got the mid-south led switchback cab lights those come on at night and then when you turn your blinker on this half will flash same with the mirror lights and then same with the door handles then we've also got a set of the amp research steps they've worked out pretty decent i know a lot of people have issues with them and i have had a few issues myself but we've always been able to get them working again so then as we work our way around here i currently have a little toolbox in the back of the truck uh, just a quick cheap one one of my buddies gave me and then as you can see back here, we've got the Fox remote reservoir shocks on here as well. You can see this tire did go bald faster than the rest. It's because we had it on the front and then I finally put it in the back inner to get some more life out of the rest of the tires. So as we keep working our way around here, you can see we've got some custom mud flaps on this thing with the butt to build on it. And then a custom exhaust that we made. And we've also got some spider tail lights. We've also got a light up here that goes with your blinkers your brake and your reverse light and then I also wanted to mention this little guy down here this is an XTR light it bolts right to your license plate mounts and it's super bright it actually helps quite a bit at night with the backup camera and just seeing out of your mirrors when you're trying to back this thing out so as far as performance stuff goes I'm not gonna pop the hood for you guys right now um, we do have a Banks intake and a Whirly custom fab intercooler set and uh, some other things done to the truck but I'm just gonna to leave that at that so let's go ahead get this thing fired up we'll let it warm up and then we'll take it for a ride You can hear the air compressor for the air horns kicking on. It's only about 35 degrees out, so not super cold, but I haven't started this thing in a few days. So let's go ahead and let this thing warm up for a minute. Probably go into high idle, and then uh, we'll take it for a ride. All right guys, this thing's nice and warmed up. Let's go ahead and take it for a ride. All right, so first thing right off the bat, since we had to use reverse, I'll mention it now, is the backup camera in this truck isn't the greatest. It's like cloudy, foggy-ish, I guess you could say. Um, just not the best backup camera I've ever seen. 
could also use a couple extra cameras like at the mirrors and stuff I know they did that on the newer trucks but this one's a 17 like I said so for this particular truck um, not 100% ideal now some of the things that I'm gonna mention in this video are self-inflicted um, things that I might have done to the truck that I'm not super happy with the results on uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and mention it now one of the first things is the wheels they ride fine they ride uh, when you're towing just fine everything's been good with them but on the rear I would have gone a little bit narrower if I was gonna do this again um, I like how they look and everything like that but a little bit narrower would be nice because when you're on a tight back road like this it is a little bit excessively wide and can make it kind of a pain sometimes or when you're towing a trailer through a work zone and you're wider than the trailer that can be a little bit annoying so right off the bat I would have done that a little bit differently if I were to do it again go a little bit narrower on the offset other than that this thing rides really nice I've been extremely happy with this truck's ride quality, even with going to the lower profile 22 inch wheels. Um, it's It rides perfectly fine to me. It's a 3500 truck. They're gonna be a little bit on the stiff side. It's not gonna ride like your grandmother's Cadillac, but personally, I've been super happy with it. been a bunch of recalls on numerous different things one of them being the seat belt there was a recall on that and then there has also been recalls on the plug-in for the block heater I guess they're known to catch on fire uh, I didn't bring mine in for that recall because I do use the block heater but I inspect it for any types of leaks and anything like that so I keep a good eye on it but recalls not a huge deal the factory takes care of them but things that I have had issues with that weren't covered by the recalls were I got this truck at 30,000 miles. Like I said, we're now at 90,000. And I don't know, right around 45,000 miles, I had this whole dash cluster go out on me. The gauges and everything, uh, mainly the digital part in the middle there, it's like a screen. That completely died on me right around 45,000 miles. Brought it into the dealership. They couldn't fix it. They had to put a new dash screen in there and it was roughly like 700 bucks so that was one of the biggest issues I had early on in owning this truck the only other thing that's been kind of annoying with it is the glow plugs I did a video a while back when the first glow plug went on this thing and now it's got a check engine light for another glow plug on the opposite side so we're gonna have to go ahead and take care of that here soon but the glow plugs seem to go quite often and that can be kind of annoying. If you're gonna do them, I do recommend changing all of the ones on the side that you're working on, just because it is so common for them to go out. So we're gonna pull into Shell real quick and grab us some diesel, and then we will take this thing on the highway, and I'll tell you guys a little bit more about how it's been to own for the last three, four years. I do run Hot Shots Secrets, their Diesel Extreme. I've ran that in this truck ever since right around 35,000 miles, and I've been super happy with it, so I continue to run it every fill up. Uh, anytime I put gas in it, I throw a little bit of the Hot Shot Secrets in there. Not sponsored or anything, but I just believe it's a pretty good product. So let's go ahead and throw some fuel and additive in this thing, and then we'll take it down the highway. So we just threw some fuel in this thing. I only threw like 65 bucks in it, but be enough for what we're doing. So that's another thing I have been pretty impressed with this truck is the fuel mileage really isn't bad for uh, 3,500 dually. I've been pretty impressed with my fuel mileage. Without a trailer empty, I've been able to get as high as 23, 24 miles to the gallon, which again, for how big this thing is and on 22s, uh, I'm happy with it. I can deal with that. 
one of the things that was stupid when I got this truck, I really hated it early on in owning this thing, was the DEF location. It was under the hood on these years. Like I said, this is a 2017, and that was absolutely ridiculous to me. You had to pop the hood, spill it everywhere, trying to fill your DEF system. So that was super annoying early on. I know on the newer trucks, they went to a fill location by the gas cap, but early on, super annoying. So that's something to keep in mind if you guys are looking for one of these. I believe 18 or 19, they went to the, uh, the fill location by the gas cap, and that wouldn't be as annoying to me as under the hood. So just something to keep in mind. This truck is a six speed truck. I know the newer ones were 10 speeds. When I bought this, the 10 speed had just came out. There was no tuning available for the transmissions and nobody was sure how they were going to hold up. So I wanted to go with the tried and true uh, Allison six speed. So that's what's in this truck and it's been doing just fine. Uh, like I said, we're at 90,000 miles in this thing. And the only thing I've had to do to it is I changed the filters a couple times. The external filter gets changed every other oil change and it's been holding up just fine. And I tow the cars quite a bit and we put quite a bit of miles on that combo and it's been perfectly fine. I mean, I don't beat the crap out of this thing every day. I drive it pretty easy, but there have been plenty of times where I jump on it pretty good and this transmission's just taking it, so. I know a lot of people had issues when they add power to these transmissions, but knock on wood, this one's been pretty decent for us. We're gonna go ahead and hop on the highway here real quick. I've got a few last minute things I need to get for Christmas, uh, which by the way, Merry Christmas guys, or Happy Holidays, whatever is your thing. It's coming up on us quick, just like it does every year. That is another thing I will say about this truck. It has plenty of power when you need it. Um, I came from an LLY Duramax. That was my truck before this one. And this one would completely blow it out of the water. And that one was definitely a lot more modified than this one is. This truck goes down the highway really smooth for what it is. Again, it's a 3500 truck on low profile tires with 22s. So you gotta expect some uh, things when you're going down the highway. But I've been impressed with how well this one drives. With the first set of tires that we had on the front of this, the Toyos that are now in the back, it developed a shake, but as soon as I swapped the tires around, it's back to being smooth as can be. Uh, obviously, it is a little bit stiffer with these low pro wheels and tires on it compared to the factory wheels. With the factory wheels, this thing rode really, really nice because all that extra sidewall acts as a secondary shock almost. So going down the highway, this thing's great. I've taken it on plenty of road trips, five, six, seven, eight hours away, no problem. Seats have always been comfortable. Um, heated seats work great, the cooled seats, great option. And one of my favorite things about this truck personally is the heated steering wheel. It's one of those things you don't realize how badly you wanna have it until you don't have it in a different vehicle. Another little issue that I've had with this thing is the coolant sensor. I know it's pretty common in these trucks. They go bad a lot and they'll tell you low coolant all the time. Mine does it randomly when it feels like it. Sometimes it'll tell me low coolant, you check it or top it off, it's completely fine. But it'll keep telling you that there's low coolant even though you're sure that it's not. Um, that is a common issue with these trucks. Again, not a huge deal. And there's plenty of aftermarket fixes out there for that. But it does get kind of annoying that uh, it kicks on and off. Another thing that I've had issues with with this truck is the trailer brake system. I've never had an actual issue while I'm towing with this thing. The trailer brakes have always worked phenomenal when you're towing, but when I don't have a trailer hooked up sometimes, it'll tell me that my I need to service my trailer brake system. Does it quite often, honestly. Not sure what the issue is there. I've checked for rubbing or chafed wires and I haven't been able to find anything yet, so I'm gonna just chalk that up to some sort of weird electrical issue or connection issue. So I keep an eye on that. But like I said, it's never been an issue when I'm actually towing. It only does it when I don't have a trailer connected to this thing. So this thing can be kind of a pain. Uh, 3,500 four-door, eight-foot bed. Trying to park this thing in a normal space is kind of a pain. Uh, you don't fit in between the lines with these wheels. So like I said, I would have gone a little bit narrower if I was gonna do this again. So 
I'm gonna run in, get a couple last minute Christmas things that I need to get, and then we'll take this thing back out and hit the highway a couple times. So there was one other thing that I did add to this thing that I actually like a lot. If uh, you get stuck in the mud trying to pull the trailer out or even if you want to play around in the snow and slide this thing around, when you turn traction control off, you got to hold the button and it'll turn traction control and stability track all the way off. But once your wheel speed gets up over 30 miles an hour, it'll kick it back on on you and it'll bring your fun or whatever you're trying to do to a halt so i installed this little switch you can get them online pretty cheap um i forget what company makes it but if you google it it'll tell you and it just interrupts a wheel speed signal so that you can disable traction control fully at the flip of a switch so if i flip that switch abs and traction control turns off until i turn this switch back on so that's a nice little feature to have, super cheap and easy. So I like having it. That switch is super handy to have. So let's head back to the house. I forgot to mention I did install some rock lights on this thing. So I wanna let you guys see what this thing looks like at night with all of our lights going. So let's head on back to the house. All right guys, so I had to go get my hair cut, so I figured I would take you guys for a ride so that I could show you these lights at night. Uh, I'm gonna show you the Diode Dynamics SS3 fog lights, and then I'm also gonna show you what the Vivid Light Bar does. They're both extremely bright, and I've been super happy with them, so I just wanted to give you guys a look. I'm sure it won't come through as good on camera, but I'll at least show you how bright they are and you guys can get an idea of it. So let's get on a road where there's no other cars, where it's nice and dark, and I will kick them on one at a time so that you guys can see. So this is my regular headlights. These are just my low beam headlights. And then I'm gonna go ahead and kick on the fog lights. So that's the SS3 fog lights. They're extremely bright, I'll show you off. And then on. So that's just low beams and fog lights. That's what I usually drive around on at night, and I've been extremely happy with them. As a lot of you guys know, I lost vision in my right eye from a uh, accident, so having light at night helps a lot. So that's the fog lights, and then up here we will kick on that light bar. So I have the light bar wired into my high beams, which was super easy to do. And so when I kick my high beams on, the we have a module called the all lights on module. When I kick my high beams on, my fog lights and my light bar and my high beams will all come on. So we'll go ahead and kick the light bar on right up here. So that's with the light bar, high beams, and fog lights on. And it lights it up pretty much like it's daytime out. 
didn't think about the street lights on this road, but you can still get a pretty good feel of how bright these things are. And light bar off. Light bar on. So it's a pretty dramatic difference with the light bar and the fog lights. I mean, fog lights off and light bar off. You can still see I have HIDs in here from Diode Dynamics and those aftermarket headlights, but the uh, fog lights with the light bar make a huge difference. Oh, this road might work a little better for us. So that's with the high beam lever kicked forward, back, forward. So let's get back to the house and I will give you guys my final thoughts on this thing. So we just got back to the house and I wanted to give you guys a peek at how this thing looks at night when it's all lit up. So let's take a look. So as you guys can see, this thing is all lit up. We've got the rock lights going, the light bar, the switchbacks. I'm a huge fan of the switchbacks. I really like what Mid-South LED has got going on over there. And like I had said before, they do go with the blinkers because they are switchbacks. So I've got my key fob here. If you hit the unlock button, it's just like hitting your blinkers. So they all go with when the blinker would go. And uh, I think it looks pretty sweet, especially going down the road at night. And people can definitely not say that they didn't see you turning. So let's go ahead and kick some of the lights on at the house up here. And I'll give you guys some final thoughts on this thing. So in conclusion, this thing has been a phenomenal truck. I've been super happy with it. Haven't really had many issues with it, except for the few little issues that I've told you guys about. And I have enjoyed daily driving this thing. I expected it to at least need ball joints or some sort of front end parts by now, especially with my setup, but it hasn't. And when it does, you guys will know because we will be doing the crib tonight upper control arm assemblies and whatever parts that they offer as this thing needs it it will get them so i hope today's video could help you guys out in making a decision to buy a truck like this or in keeping yours for a little bit longer or more mileage as always i appreciate you guys for checking out the channel merry christmas happy holidays and we will catch you on the next one